So as I sought the Lord in prayer, I had this name three times, Jabez, Jabez, Jabez. I had that name three times in my spirit. And I know when the Lord begins to speak, I know that he's communicating that name to be able to guide us as to what he intends to do in the miracle service tonight. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And the Bible says, and his mother called his name Jabez. Now, if you read it like this from the KJV or the modern translations, you would not get the full picture. These two, the whole story of Jabez here is captured in just two verses. Um, and is broken into three phases. Number one, it starts with the end of the story. Then number two, it starts with the condition. The condition that Jabez found himself as a result of his birth and the proclamations of his mother. Then the next verse, verse 10, tells us what he did to change the tides. So let's go back to verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. That was the end of Jabez's life. But the Bible says the beginning of the story is that the mother called his name Jabez, meaning sorrow, pain, because I bear him in sorrow. Are we following the story now? So Jabez from verse 9 was a gentleman who grew up experiencing all kinds of woes in his life. And the Bible says the mother went through excruciating pain in childbirth and in anger and annoyance she called the child Jabez. Verse 10. The Bible says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel. Called on the God of Israel. The Bible does not say Jabez lamented over his situation helplessly. The Bible did not say Jabez went around in hopelessness and despair. The Bible says somewhere along the lines of Jabez's growth process, he found out that there was a God in heaven who could change the narrative of men's lives. Is somebody learning now? And the Bible says when he found out whoever it was that taught Jabez about God, the Bible does not tell us, at least not in this chapter, but then we know that Jabez eventually found out that there is a God in heaven who is the God of Israel. Then the Bible says, Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Number one, I'm establishing our prayer points tonight. This is the whole miracle service tonight. Number two, enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. Number three, let your hand be with me. Then number four, that thou would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. I like the ending part. And God granted him that which he requested. Please look up, look up, look up. Don't assume you understand what you just read. The Bible never said God granted him what he wanted. The Bible never said God granted him what he cried for. The Bible it never said God granted him what he needed. It says God granted him what he requested. Is someone learning now? So, let's discuss Jabez very briefly. Number one, I have taught you here and the word Jabez means he makes sorrowful. That means the memory of that individual brings pain and causes pain. Jabez can be a person and Jabez can be a situation. Now, um, please look up. Let me, we're not teaching tonight. We have the weeks following to teach. But I want to show you something in the Bible. Every name, every name you see in the Bible is not just the name of an individual. Every name you see in the Bible is a spiritual pathway that if followed will produce a kind of believer. Are we together? So when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Mary, Samson, all of these names in the Bible, they are names of individuals, 
but in those names are also spiritual pathways that if followed will produce a kind of believer are we together now so the name Abraham is the name of an individual but that name is also a capture of a spiritual pathway that can turn anybody to become a father of nations so the Bible says look unto Abraham your father are we together now look unto him does not mean just see him no are we together so when you see Sarah Isaac Jacob all of these lay your hands on your head and declare that your name will be a pathway to knowing God go ahead and pray declare it from the depth of your heart Lord in my lifetime my name will also be a spiritual pathway that will help men to know God in a certain way. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. So if you understand what I said now, you will know that Jabez, look up please. Jabez was not just the name of a person. Jabez is a capture of how men can turn the tides of curses of yokes of ill speakings to become a life of honor and dignity and grace are we together now so the whole story here is not just a revelation of a young man who was seemingly cursed by his mother who found his way out to glory no there is a spiritual pathway and this is what i want you to get so number one the prayer of jabez Give us verse 9. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Who taught, okay, verse 10. Who taught Jabez, excuse me, who taught Jabez that the cure for the curse, the cure for a life of limitation, is that in all you're getting, when you are tired of going around life, when you are tired of failure, among the many things that must be introduced to your life is the blessing. Is someone learning now? Not just counsel, not just some money, not just assistance, the blessing. In Genesis 12, 2 to 3, 12, 2 to 3. Genesis 12, 2 to 3. It says, and I will make thee a great nation. Someone shout amen. amen. And I will bless thee. Hallelujah. And make thy name great. Amen. It says, and thou shalt be a blessing. Amen. Thou shalt, hold on. It's one thing to be blessed. But your blessing is not complete until you become a blessing. So when Jabez is saying, bless me. He's saying, empower me with the capacity to, number one, have personal results by the empowerment of the Spirit, and then to become an extension of your blessing to my world. Someone say, bless me. Bless me, bless me does not mean give me money. No. Bless me does not mean give me a job. Mm -mm. The blessing of the Lord, you see, is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully. The blessing of the Lord is really the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But there is a dimension of his operation that can cause him to rest upon a man. Watch this now. He can rest upon a man huh, in power. And what happens to that man is that when that blessing is upon you, it has an attracting force. This is how it works. Literally, it begins to attract three things to your life. Number one, it attracts men. Number two, it attracts circumstances. Circumstances are living things. They can be attracted to you. Are we together? And then number three, it can attract opportunities. Is someone learning? Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Someone say bless me. 
Ah, bless me. Place upon my life that which attracts men. Place upon my life that which attracts circumstances. Place upon my life that which attracts opportunities. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone is praying. Place upon my life. In the name of Jesus. When your life is barren of helpers, it is that the blessing of the Lord is not upon you. If your life is barren of opportunities, favorable opportunities, not negative opportunities, it is that you have not experienced the blessing of the Lord. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Now, please look up. Look up. Here's how many people pray. Lord, bless my job. That is not wrong. But that is a very inferior spiritual approach. Lord, bless my, my work. Bless my business. That is wonderful. But the real person to be blessed is you. Are we together now? Because when you are blessed, everything that flows from you also flows with the blessing that is on you. Are we together now? Your business can be blessed and yet you are not blessed. Yes, sir. The prayer is not just bless my business, not just bless my work. Jabez said, bless me. If I say bless my house, what if I leave that house? Bless me so that I become a living extension of this, this, this mysterious spiritual force that can come upon an individual. Listen, I want you to know, I have taught you and I will keep teaching you that what you attract to your life is a function of what is upon your head. It is not a function of what is available. It is a function of what is upon your head. So, someone can step into a city like Abuja here, and in Abuja, there are all kinds of things, demonic activities. In Abuja, there are all kinds of things, the manifestation of favor. But regardless, look up, please, let me have your attention. Regardless what the situation is, one thing is sure for a fact that what is upon you is what will select the situations that will come to you. There are people, as soon as they show up, in this land you know what happens their helpers start gravitating towards them somebody who would have traveled is kept back it is the blessing keeping the person back to make sure the person must meet with you but there are others as soon as you land in a place the one last person to help you feels an urge to leave that place the person did not just leave something upon you is controlling the possibilities around you i'm saying this because for some of you this is why god brought you here you change your cloth it does not change you change your job it does not change you change friends it does not change you change neighborhood it does not change what should change is what is on your head not what is around you apostle why is this business not working i thought it was because i had wrong partners i brought other partners why is this not this church not growing i thought it was a location now we've gotten a bigger place no that thou wouldest bless me. Someone again say, bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Listen, when it was time for Abraham to bless his sons, the Bible says to all the sons that came from his concubines, he gave gifts, physical things. Then he called Isaac and said, Isaac, I'm not going to give you anything physical. What I'm going to give you is something on your head. And when I place that, you can go. I'm sure Isaac would have felt, what kind of unfair thing is this? You've given people cattle. <laughs> that, it was because of that blessing. The Bible says, and Isaac sowed in that land. Lay your hands again and say, bless me. <laughs> bless me in the name of Jesus Christ. When I learned this, I, st I stopped chasing shadows and chasing mundane things. When you have a good job without the blessing, it can leave you overnight. You have a good house without the blessing. Something can come and happen to you. You can relocate without the blessing, you will still get into trouble. You can change clothes without the blessing, you will still be in trouble. For many of you, the Lord sent you here tonight. 
because this mysterious grace that has come upon ordinary people and began to rewrite their lives you know what it means for a man to be blessed empowered by the spirit insisting that you must prosper not dependent on the economy no you can know the blessing and know that it is upon a man because everywhere you go you define your own possibilities you are never subject to the situations and circumstances and i want you to believe this i'm not just this is not just a preacher's talk you don't believe this the reality that is plaguing our world today will catch up with you he said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it you curse a man that god has blessed you are only wasting your time yes remember when balaam was when Balaam was called to curse the nation of Israel, when he stood to curse them, he said, there is a formation. These people are already blessed. No matter what you say, they cannot be cursed. For someone in the name of Jesus, as a result of what is resting on your head, no matter what the enemy does, they will only be wasting their time. In the name of Jesus.